All right, everyone. So uh, on day uh, three of our class, what we're going to do now is start to look at PhoneGap, also known as Cordova. I'm going to talk about what both of those are. They're very interchangeable. You can talk about Cordova, and it basically means phone gap. You can talk about phone gap. It basically means Cordova. There are differences, and it depends on the license mostly and uh, what you want to do with the technology. Um, but basically, phone gap is a template so that we can uh, create HTML-based Android apps. So instead of going to File, New, Android App, we're doing something else because that will create a Java-based app. We want to create an HTML5-based app. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, wherever you're looking at here, minimize, and, and let's go to computer. Let's open a computer window so we go back to the C drive, the local disk C. Go back to local disk C. Remember, this is where the ADT bundle is found at. Everything is there. Everyone found it. Um, it's over a gigabyte, so uh, it's all set up. Now, uh, what's also on the C drive here, if you, if you scroll down alphabetically, you'll see something called PhoneGap 2.90. So keep that in mind. This is where the PhoneGap software is installed on our computers. We put it easily on the top level of the C drive. So when we need to access it again, we'll get it from the C drive. Now, we'll back up. Well, what is PhoneGap exactly? Let's open a web browser and let's go to PhoneGap.com. So I'm going to open a web browser and I'm going to go to PhoneGap.com. PhoneGap.com. We have easily create apps using the web technologies you know and love, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. PhoneGap is a free and open source framework that allows you to create mobile apps using standardized web APIs for the platforms you care about. So basically, we're going to be writing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And what PhoneGap does is it basically translates what you write, specifically JavaScript, it translates it into the appropriate Java language if you're going to go to Android, or to the appropriate um, Objective-C if you're going to go to uh, iPhone, or the appropriate uh, C-sharp if you're going to go to Windows Phone and BlackBerry, etc., etc. So that's what this tool is, and it's, and it's, a, it's a template of sorts. So. It's a, a very popular platform. Um, they've been around a while in internet terms, you know, not 20 years, but three years, four years. That's a, that's a long time in internet terms. They've been around a while, and they've been building this uh, foundation. And actually, at a certain point, the original code that made up this project um, was, was bought by Adobe. Anyone heard of a little company called Adobe? Well, they run Photoshop and Dreamweaver and all of that big web technologies. So then they spun off some of the code as open source and put it under a, an Apache license, and then they kept an aspect of it uh, for themselves. So that's why there's PhoneGap, which is the Adobe version of this technology, and then there's Cordova, which is the, uh, which is the Apache, which is the open source, the fully open source version of the software, of the framework. Uh, what we have here with, with PhoneGap is also a service that Adobe wants to sell you, which is basically take your code, your existing HTML web app, and use PhoneGap Build, which is Adobe's software, to then do the conversion to all the platforms. Out of the kindness of their hearts? No, for a fee. That's what their uh, that's what their business model is. They're using phone gap technology, and then they have the business on top of it, which is that we'll convert it to all the platforms. We'll take care of it, just pay us. The other <laughs> side of that is Cordova, which is you're on your own, here's all the documentation, you do it. That's what we're going to do. But I'm going to introduce both concepts here, phone gap and Cordova, because they're, they're, they're different in enough ways that it's important to talk about. But uh, here under, uh, here in the phone gap, website. It's, I like the website because, you know, it keeps you up to date with what's going on with the technology. There's going to be a PhoneGap Day, some sort of conference on October 24th. 
and it talks about uh, how to develop apps, get started, all of that. It works for all platforms. Try it now. Find out more. Apps created with PhoneGap. The BBC created their Olympic coverage app uh, via PhoneGap. Untapped. Anyone heard of the Untapped app? And not a lot of beer drinkers here, I guess, but <laughs> Untapped is a famous uh, app for that and other ones. So Browser Quest, a game. This is stuff that's been made with PhoneGap. Technically, you've got an HTML project on top of PhoneGap, which is then on top of Android. Or, you know, your project on top of PhoneGap on top of an iPhone. Your project on top of PhoneGap on top of a BlackBerry. So PhoneGap is the middleman that converts your project, HTML projects, into web, into uh, and, uh, native apps. So I would recommend you browse PhoneGap on your own. There's a section somewhere here. Where did they put it? Community? Books. There's a section under Community and Books that I would recommend that you browse to find good recommendations and more textbooks and such for PhoneGap. I've checked out a few of them. I like them because everything that we've been doing, there's a lot of steps just to get us to this point. This is day three of this class, and now we're actually kind of going to get a little more hands-on. There's a lot of foundation that needs to be laid, and a lot of these books help you with that. So here's another perspective on this class. Let's go look at, um, well, let's look at it here. Click Install Phone Gap. Obviously, this is already done on our computers, but I'm showing you what you're going to do at home. Inst click Install Phone Gap, and it tells you, okay, to install, no problem. All you first need is Node.js, and then you're going to install Phone Gap from NPM. And then you're going to type some command line. Uh, command line foo and set up your project in the command line. Easy, right? Remember I asked last time, how many of you used the command, uh, command line recently? Very few people raise your hands. So this is the thing. Phone Gap, Cordova, has evolved. And I've been using it for a while now. And when they went from their 2.0 branch to their 3.0 branch, they went this way, command line. In the older version, 2.9 and below, it was a simple zip file that you would download and just start using. Download the zip file, open the Android template, you get up and running. After they went to the 3.0 branch, they completely changed the workflow. How many of you have ever heard of Node.js before? Okay, so you need, nowadays, you need to install Node.js. Then you need to go to the command line and type that command, install phone gap via the command line. Then, via the command line, write a few more commands to create your app, and then make it an Android app, and so forth. Not super complicated. I have written it down for you on my next sheets, but much more complicated than what it used to be, which is just download the zip file and get started. So that's why I'm introducing PhoneGap first, because we're going to use the classic way, the old way, of simply opening the template and starting. When we're comfortable with that, then we'll do the hard way, the modern way, which is to run the command line then you can decide which of the two you want to do. You say, well, why don't we just stick with the zip file template? Because again, when they went to the 3.0 branch, they abandoned the zip file method. If you want to use zip files, you have to stay in the 2 branch. So notice, they stopped supporting a simple zip file a year ago, almost. 2.91. Um, if you want, right now, they just published 3.6, PhoneGap and Cordova, 3.6. So they've left this method in the dust. Now it has to be done by command lines. Um, and I think teaching it is harder, and I think also doing it is harder. But, uh, you know, the, the way to affect change is to get on the board of directors and start guiding that project because everyone decided or enough people decided to steer the project that way, the command line. So notice we've got Phone Gap 2.91 released November 5th. Remember, remember it, 5th of November. And uh, 2.8, 2.9, etc. If you notice in our in our C drive, wait a minute, we've got Phone Gap 2.90. And that was released more than a year ago. Well, from my research. When I was teaching these classes, we were using 2.90, and then 2.91 came out, and then we all started to use it and play with it, and I saw that it had problems. 
So I tried to figure out, well, what's the problem with it? And it's no easy solutions. And there won't be easy solutions because PhoneGap has been 2.91 has been abandoned. Again, they're caring now about PhoneGap 3.6 and 3.7 and 4.0. And the short answer is, when you go home, do not download PhoneGap 2.91. It probably will not work. We're going to use PhoneGap 2.90, and I have it at the very top of my sheet number 5 in bold. Make sure you have PhoneGap 2.90 downloaded and unzipped on your hard drive. So don't get 2.91. It probably will not work. If you figure out how it works, let me know. But I know that 2.90 works. So we'll get back to the command line method of modern phone gap later. We're going to use the classic way first. That's what's been downloaded to our C drive, phone gap 290. 290. To show you what's, what we actually downloaded, it's not too big. It's uh, 37 megabytes. But what's inside, if you want to browse this also, or just watch this a moment, what's inside a PhoneGap 290 folder, you know, a bunch of uh, Git stuff, and um, there's uh, the documentation, which is outdated now, but still pretty relevant, and then a lib folder for libraries, and inside of the lib folder, here are the templates for the platforms. We can use Eclipse to open the Android template and start an Android project HTML5 based. If we use um, Xcode on the Mac, we can open the iOS template and start to create an iPhone app. If we have uh, you know, Visual Basic, we, then we can use that to create the Windows Phone 7 and 8 um, apps. And notice also we have templates for creating a full featured Windows 8 app. So you can use PhoneGap to create an HTML5 based Windows app, you know, a real full Windows app as well as an OS X app. So PhoneGap is not limited to just creating mobile device apps. You can create desktop apps as well. That's what's in our template, uh, that's what's in our folder. That's what we're going to use in Eclipse. So when you go home, remember to download PhoneGap 2.9.0 if you're going to do this. We'll look at one more thing here, then we'll actually do it. If you hover over Developer, we have Docs, Documentation. Let's go look at the Docs. Again, RTFM. What does that stand for? Read the Friendly Manual. Read the Friendly Manual. Uh, that means, you know, if, you, if you're lost, try reading the manual. The answer might be there. So that's what is here under Developer Docs. This is the manual. This is everything about what PhoneGap is, how to set it up, how to use it. We're going to be guided by this a lot. The thing is, though, we have to remember this. At the very top right corner, this is saying the documentation for version 3.5. So if we're going to use 2.90, we should select up here 3.90. Because the code does change, it does evolve. Remember in last month's class, we were writing a jQuery mobile app with a pop-up screen. And when we upgraded the code from 1.3 to 1.4 or something, the pop-up broke because the code was deprecated. So the code does change. If we're looking at the documentation for 3.5, but we're using 2.9, the code might be different. It might not even work. If we switch over to 2.90, what it shows us is, okay, you want to know how to, how to take a photo in your app? Here's the documentation, and here's the code, and here's an example. Let's check that out for a moment. Make sure you switched on the top right here to 2.90, and then click the camera chapter. The camera object provides access to the device's default camera app. There's a privacy notice I'll get back to in a moment. But then you scroll down. There's something about permissions. Don't worry about that yet. I'm going to scroll past permissions. 
keep scrolling. Okay, here we go. Camera dot get picture. Scroll down till you find a section that says camera dot get picture. What this does is takes a photo using the camera or retrieves a photo from the device's image gallery, the camera roll or folders. The image is passed to the success callback as a base64 encoded string or as the URI, the location, for the image file. The method itself returns a camera popover handle object that can be used to reposition the file selection popover. Okay, what does that gibberish mean? Basically, look at this. Navigator.camera.getPicture. That seems a lot like JavaScript. It is JavaScript. It's JavaScript that we're writing here that then gets translated basically by phone gap to the appropriate Java command, which is, I don't know, picture.getit, whatever it is in Java. But this is JavaScript that we can write and use, and phone gap translates it. There's then a couple of parameters that we can add, such as camera success. That's a callback function. We don't have the open close parentheses like we've seen other times when we ran some JavaScript. That's a function. Why doesn't it have the parentheses? Well, the, the specification says no parentheses. Um, camera error. What happens if you don't get a uh, if you don't retrieve a photo or take a picture? Deal with that. And we can put some camera options. What are the options? It's all in the documentation. Basically, it describes you use camera dot get picture function opens the device's default camera app that allows users to snap picture etc etc the picture itself is captured as a long string a base64 encoded string just a sentence that describes what the picture is and then you can do stuff with it like display it in the image tag save it like in local storage we talked about that other things like lawn chair or couch db or pouch db that we'll talk about post data to a remote server so take a photo with this, take that data, and save it in the cloud. How? Well, there's going to be links and documentation throughout. But here it's giving us the pieces of the puzzle, and then we have to put it together. And what I like is then as you scroll down, it gives you the actual examples. Quick example, full example, which are fully functional. You can copy the full example to a brand new document and use it, and, and it works. But notice in the example here, quick example, take a photo and retrieve it. So there's navigator.camera.getPicture, callback function on success, callback function on fail, with a few options, quality 50 percent, I guess, destination type, um, it's a URL, here's the result of on success, Display it on screen. Display it on screen. The result of a failure, make a pop-up happen. Failed because, and then what message does the does the get picture automatically give us? So this is how we are able to take our humble web app that we made last month. It, it, that web app did some cool things, but now what we'll be able to do is also add a screen where it's like you know, take a take a selfie and then uh, put the college's initials on your shirt. You know, how, w what do apps do nowadays or what do you want your app to do? We should have some sort of phone gap equivalent uh, to take a picture, here's the code for it, and then what do we do with it? That's more pieces of a puzzle that we need, but that's what phone gap will be, our foundation to do more than what our basic web app currently does. So we're going to look at this stuff in detail. And if you go back, this is how do I access the compass of the device? How do I access geolocation? How do I access a file stored on their SD card? Uh, how do I capture like voice messages? I want someone to make a voice message into my app and say audio notes, for example. Notifications, deal with other media, etc. 
So we're going to be referring to this often to get examples of the code and then actually use it. That's why I bring up the phonegap.com website. Any questions so far? Let's actually use it now. So remember, PhoneGap 2.90 is on our local disk. And what I want to do is start with the template that it gives me. So let's go to Eclipse. When you, you have a couple of ways, I'm not exactly sure the difference. I'm sure there's a nuance. And I've done it both ways, and I seem to get the same result. But I want to open the existing PhoneGap template. And here in Eclipse, we're not just going to go to File, Open. That's going to open a file, not a project. I want to open a whole project. So the way we'll do it at this point, um, we'll follow my instructions here, and then I'll show you the other way, which is File, New, Project. I'm selecting File, New, just generic project. I'm not selecting Android project. That's going to create a project like last time. I don't want that. Let's go to File, New, Project. We can make many types of projects, but the one I want is from the Android section. Android project from existing code. I want to open an existing project. So this is how you can open last week's project as well. We didn't do it together. You can try that on your own. We're going to open this PhoneGap template file. Android project from existing code. Next. Which one? Before we go to browse, turn on copy project into workspace. Notice I made a note of it here. Very important. That sounds very important, doesn't it? You want to turn this on because if you don't, we're about to open the original template. And if we make changes to the original template, when you make new project based on that template, it's been altered. Unless you turn on make a copy of that. Leave the original template alone and copy that template to my workspace. I'll remind us where the workspace is again later. But make sure you turn on Copy Project into Workspace. And just to confirm, make sure you've turned on Copy Project into Workspace. Now, uh, on the top where it says Root Directory, we'll browse. We'll go find the Android template inside of the PhoneGap folder inside of the C drive. So open <coughs> computer, local disk, C. Scroll down to PhoneGap 2.90, open that. Open lib, the libraries, open Android, and we'll see example. Select the example folder. Once you find the example folder, select it and click open. So notice it's going to say, okay, you're about to import project from that folder, and the project's name is example. That's why we learned previously, and we'll do it again together, probably, um, rename a project because our project is going to be called example, not my amazing app. So that's why we talked about changing our project name. So once we see that this is our project, select finish. You might get a red X on your project for a moment. Hopefully it goes away once it finishes, um, finishes loading. Did everyone get a brand new example project there? All right, so this opened my example project. It basically, on the surface, looks like the previous project we opened, its structure and such, with some differences. 
Now, did anyone get some scary red uh, messages down here about unable to resolve target? Raise your hand. Probably everyone. What's going on there is that that project was originally created with Android API 17. And we've got API 19. So this is just saying, well, you know, wrong API number. And I think we can ignore this, but I wrote it down here how to fix this, which is to basically upgrade our project from 17 to 19. Uh, so following my instructions, I, I, everything I'm doing is on sheet 5. Uh, I'm on number 6, um, six sub-step B, sub-step sub Roman numeral I, which is we want to uh, upgrade the properties of our project. So we've got the example. We've got the example project. You want to right-click it, select properties. We've got a bunch of properties we can edit here. We want to switch to the Android section of properties. Right there. And so what we basically want to do here is confirm that this is the, the version of the, of the API that we're using. Uh, it, it was saying we're, we, this was created with 17, but we're going to use 19. So all we need to do here is select Apply, and then OK. We don't get any confirmation. The messages are still down there. That's OK. And next, continuing on my instructions here, up on the Project menu, go to Project Clean. Project Clean. I've only got one project. If you did create a test project, don't worry. This, this is smart enough to know which projects to clean because it's going to clean the one that changed. If you've got more than one project, probably only example is checked. That's what we want. It knows that when it needs the cleaning. Uh, so that's why I left it on clean all projects. You could go in and clean a specific project by selecting it, but this will do the job. Click OK. It'll do a little bit of processing, perhaps. And then it'll still say unable to resolve, but this is this particular message is not dynamic in that it will not go away to tell you good job. It's just that that issue happened when we lotus, loaded the project and no other major issue happened to push that out of the way, so it still shows it. But if that bothers you, let me show you this very important button right here, right here on the console. Click that. Clear console. Problem solved. Problem solved. <laughs> Question. I accidentally closed my project explorer. Yes, if you lose any of these windows, like Package Explorer or tabs, you can go to Window, Show View, and then you'll see Package Explorer. So if you lose any of these, any of these panels, you can get them back this way. Oh. Window, Show, View, and Package Explorer. So anyway, uh, no errors here, and um, we've upgraded our project up to API 19. And this is, uh, this is our Cordova example project. So uh, everyone at this point, you've got the example loaded in Eclipse. Well, I want to see what it looks like. So now we're going to run this project either in your virtual device or real device. Um, I have not created any run configurations, but I know a lot of you have. The run configuration you created pre uh, before now was set to, sh to, to run whatever app you created. But we've got a new project, so if you select your run configuration launch in, in 3.2 inch, it's going to still run the other project. So we're going to need a new run configuration here to target our brand new Cordova example project to run either on our virtual or real device. So to reiterate, to reiterate this, you should be getting the hang of it. 
up here on the Run button, you click there and Run Configurations. Select Run Configurations. Double click Android application here to create a new configuration. Name it whatever you want, but I'm going to call it Run Example on my, in my case, it's an LG 730. Obviously, you decide what you're going to write there. Probably run example on 3.2 inch AVD. Or run example on Nexus 7. We need to say what project. So don't forget to, under project here to browse. I guess you can type it in, but you might misspell it. Uh, so I would do browse, select the project. So if you've got more than one project, obviously very important to tell it which project to run. If you've only got one project, well, it's the one project you have there. Click OK. Go to the Target tab. Remember, everything that we're talking about is on a, one of these previous sheets somewhere. You want to go to Target, Always Prompt. And I see people do this a lot. You don't have to do this. You don't have to turn on the AVD here because we're not selecting this option. If we selected this option, it would make sense to turn on the AVD. We're selecting Let Me Choose, so it makes no point to turn that on there. You're just wasting a second. And the seconds add up if you keep doing it every time. Always prompt. And again, since we're not selecting anything there, you're not going to turn on uh, if you get the option, oh, right here, you're not going to turn on use same device for future launches because we haven't choose, chosen the device yet. So don't waste time on that yet. So turn on always prompt, apply, run. And then on this screen is where you select your device, real or virtual, and then turn on use same device. That way this won't pop up anymore to ask me, what device do you mean again? Well, I keep launching the launch in my LG 730, so I'm going to select it. Use same device. Click OK. Every time we come in for the first launch, we will get the log cat. What do we do about the log cat? You can click no on that. We don't need all of that. De uh, detail for for the moment. I'll click no. Click OK. And the result on your virtual real device is you get the Cordova mascot. So how many of you got the Cordova Apache mascot and a little glowing device ready, either on your real or virtual device? Perfect. <coughs> So anyone need a little help to get that running? All right, so we ran the example project, and I ran it on my real device, and it showed up pretty well. And as I say, I recommend to have more than one launch configuration, especially because I'm going to test it on this size device and maybe another size device. So this is optional, but I'm going to create a second launch configuration because I have two devices, my real device and my virtual. So here I'm going to just create a new one, one example on AVD. The reason for that is that uh, I, I see sometimes that launching my app on the virtual device is faster than my real device. So 
sometimes I want to see a quick result without waiting for the device. See, that's already up way faster than there. So now I've got it on, uh, on real device and virtual device. This is optional. At least get it working on one of them. And, um, and then we'll go on. But uh, once again, to check. So this is working for everyone? Anyone? OK. So let's see what we've actually got here. If it's running on a device, have you noticed also if you uh, if you uh, rotate not on the virtual device, I guess, but if you rotate your real device, um, it it understands your orientation and then it 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 rotates over and it goes horizontal, right? When I'm on vertical, uh, it's got the mascot and the text, and if I go horizontal, then it's got it next to each other, the mascot and the text, and then even the opposite side flips over to that side. So it, it senses your orientation. Now on your virtual device, I thought it worked here, but it doesn't. But you can do this. On your virtual device, to rotate your device, on your keyboard, the number pad, press number 9. Not on the number row. doesn't do anything. The number pad, press 9, and it rotates it. But it doesn't seem to to, to see your orientation shift on the virtual device, does it? I don't know what the issue of that might be, but if you want to rotate your virtual device, press 9. Toggle it. All right, so let's see what we were given here. On the left side, Package Explorer. We have a variety of um, standard Android files. The non-standard ones are, there's a folder called Cordova. That's new. Wait a minute, I thought we were using PhoneGap. Yes, but we're going to see both of those names here and there. Sometimes we'll see Cordova, sometimes we'll see PhoneGap, because Cordova, you can think of that as the root of it all. And then PhoneGap uh, is the Adobe version of it. So Cordova. Uh, sometimes here and there I also see some references at times to Droid Gap. Droid Gap was the older name for the Android version of Phone Gap. So if you run into Droid Gap, it's, it's Phone Gap. Cordova. Alright, more importantly what we'll actually work with, there's a brand new Assets folder Open that Assets folder. There's a www folder in there. Open that folder. And what's inside of the www folder is a website. HTML, CSS, JPEGs, pings, JavaScript. This is, uh, this is what's making up uh, the main part of our app. Now, I didn't get a chance to install the, the web plugin. I'll, I'll do it during our break. Uh, but you should have a different icon. Mine has a little world next to index. Yours probably shows an actual like little sheet of paper. Uh, so just to confirm, um, on index, right-click it, select Open With, and you should see, what is yours, HTML Editor? Select HTML Editor. I haven't installed the plugin yet, so my, I'm going to go with text editor. We'll go with HTML editor. What do you get? HTML code. So I've got here HTML code. No, you do need the HTML editor. Yeah, you can edit. We'll be able to edit here. I want to turn on line numbers. Right-click the gray area, show line numbers. So we will be able to edit from here. Uh, we're not going to need to use Notepad anymore, really. We've got Eclipse, which is our text editor. And so if you scroll down, we'll see a spot that says on line 30. Apache Cordova. That's the text that appears on that home screen. 
On line 32, connecting to device, line 33, device is ready. That's that, that's that text that appears right there, device is ready. So let's change a little bit of this and see our results. On line 30, instead of it saying Apache Cordova, why don't you write your name or your last name or something. I'm just going to write my last name, Campos. I'm going to write um, the Campos app. Line 30. This is enclosed in a couple of H1 tags. That's familiar. This is saying that this is a big and bold heading, the Campos app. On line 32 and 33, change those two lines to make it say something else. Line 32 is something about connecting to device that we're waiting for the event or the event of listening is active. And here the event is received, that the device is ready, that the that the that the device is ready to be used, that the app is loaded. So I'm going to say on line 32, maybe like uh, please wait. And then on line 33, some sort of welcome message that we're ready to, to function, such as, hello, Dave. So let's change those three little bits of, uh, of data there, lines 30, 32, and 33. Notice Eclipse is telling me, because of the red marker over here, I have not saved yet. So see this result, you're going to save it, and you're going to click on your Run button again and choose your Run configuration. So it's going to load up. There's the change. I'm going to load it on my real device as well. And now here's the possible first of many little like errors that like why would why why does this happen? I am trying to run this on my real device. It worked a moment ago. I swore it did. There it is. It worked a moment ago. And now I'm trying to run it and now it doesn't work. Well what it's what mine is saying, failed to install example APK on device timeout. I see sometimes that if a timeout happens is I'm going to go to the home screen to wake it up. I'm going to go to the home screen, and then I'll try again. So I'm going to select the same run LG730. Uploading example, failed to install example, timeout. OK. Um, here's another solution. I can delete my example app so that I'm so that I know I'm installing the newest version of it. <coughs> so I've uninstalled it from my device. Hmm. Still getting a timeout. Okay. That's why I've got a virtual device. Now, is anyone ha having this problem? Is anyone getting this timeout? Okay, one person. Okay, that's good. 20 would not be good. So we'll figure that out in a moment. Um, but so far here, we've been able to, to load up our, our example project and, uh, and see the results, right? So if we got this far, very good. We've done uh, we've done that whole foundational stuff. We've set some run configurations. We've imported the PhoneGap project. We know that it's an HTML project. We're gonna play.